does the postulation of a multiverse and the anthropic principle to select from it because we're here, does that eliminate the possibility of a supernatural being, a god? Part of the motivation for introducing the multiverse explanation for the biological fine-tuning of the universe was to finally get rid of God because the explanation that the universe is so fit for life because God made it that way uh, just appeared anathema to, to many scientists, certainly many cosmologists. Uh, but I have to say uh, that I know uh, uh, religious scientists who are very comfortable with the idea of a multiverse and, and a God. I mean, they say... Uh, that, well, if you've got this God who is, uh, is all-powerful, then why can this God not make an infinite number of universes? It doesn't have to limit it to this one. Um, so I don't think you could ever really uh, use it to prove that God does not exist. But I think probably it undermines uh, the, the argument that many people have, which, which they used to apply to the biological realm, that the universe looks sort of too good to just be an accident. Uh, and therefore we need God uh, to explain it. Now, I think Darwin did a great job in eliminating uh, the need for God in, uh, in designing the species. Um, in the same way, I think the multiverse does cut the ground from under those who would say, uh, well, um, the, the universe is put together in such an ingenious and clever way, there must be a being who has done it. Because if you've got all possibilities, well, Sure, you could have a, a being that decides to make all possible universes, but you it seems know, it's, a little it's, wasteful. A, it's a long <laughs> way away from the sort of traditional God. And so I think it, you know, it does have that effect, although logically it's not getting rid of uh, the supernatural dimension, if you like. Uh, it takes away a lot of the shine from it, I think, uh, but other people probably don't feel that way. You've, uh, though, had some work kind of undermining the multiverse itself by showing some of the consequences of it. Right. One of the things I've tried to do is to get away from using this word God because it means so many different things to so many people. Um, and w what I think is a more helpful thing to focus on is not uh, is there a God that explains the universe, but does the universe have a meaning or a purpose? Uh, and I sometimes, well, I used to use that word design, but I'm very uh, <laughs> scared of doing that these days. But I would certainly say that the universe appears as if it's got a meaning or a purpose. A better word I have is that the universe seems to be about something. Indeed, you can't be a scientist unless you suppose mm. that there is a coherent scheme of things. And that when we do our science, when we get to the next layer of reality, we sort of uncover what's, uh, what's coming next. We expect to find order and rationality. We don't expect it all to fall apart if we go to the next level. So science is, is predicated on this act of faith. Uh, that there is a coherent scheme of things and that the universe isn't just some sort of uh, arbitrary hodgepodge of odds and ends. It's hanging together, so it's about something. Now, I'm not sure that's quite the same as purpose, but it seems to be close to the notion of meaning. So we find meaning in the universe. Science is, after all, an exercise in uncovering what's going on. Uh, and it's got to be meaningful, otherwise you wouldn't be a scientist. Well, so, they would use the term regularities, so, so to look for regularities in nature. Uh, yeah, regularities is <laughs> part of it, but I think it doesn't capture the coherent whole. It's got to make sense, you see. It's not just, mm. well, okay, we can just plot a graph and it's got a shape and that's the end of it. But no, well, well, why does it have to make sense? I mean, some people... Well, it doesn't why, have to make why? sense, why? but I mean, it does seem to make sense. And, and most physicists, even the most strongly atheistic physicists, expect it to make sense to them. They, as an act of faith, they believe that it's intelligible uh, and, and beautiful, furthermore, that it's not just, oh yes, that's what, what you know, this has uh, such and such a mass and that force strength is such and such. They expect to have an underlying theory where it's that wonderful sense of, ah, now I see how it all falls into place. And I bet you, if you ask, uh, you know, even the most atheistic scientists, they would admit, well, yes, we do expect that that's what we find. Uh, they won't say, well, that's what we found up to now, but probably if we look a bit further, right. uh, all that will fall apart and it won't be a, a coherent scheme of things. So I, I like to say not so much, well, you know, there is a purposeful God who has sort of made it all and, uh, and the purpose of the universe can be seen through that uh, theological dimension. It's more that, uh, that the purposefulness or meaningfulness of the universe is inherent within it and that we discern that through science. So many people think that science and mathematics are the enemy of meaning and purpose in the universe. They think that science 
demystifies the universe and therefore robs it of, uh, of any sort of meaningful content. But I see it as just the other way around, that the more we do science, the more we learn about the wonders of the universe we're in, the more convinced I am that it's about something, that there is a scheme of things, that there is ultimately some sort of meaning to it all.